just flattening out the bottom of this heel a little bit. And then I'm going to start bringing down my foot a little bit so that the heel actually pokes up a little bit more than the rest of the foot. Uh, and that's something we're going to continuously define a little bit later on. But uh, for right now, I think, I think that's where we need it to be. So um, I guess just soften my edges again, delete my history. These are steps I'll do every time. And that's the end of step one, or step two. Uh, step three here, uh, we're building the uh, front part of the foot now. Uh, the first step was building the stirrup. The second step was building the heel. Uh, this uh, third part is going to cover building the front of the foot. So I'm going to select my edges on the bottom of the foot. And I think the easiest way to look at this is extruding out these bottom two edges to sort of make the bottom of my foot. I'll widen this out. I'm actually going to rotate it just a little bit as well. You don't want to rotate this too much, as you see here, uh, because that can actually uh, cause your foot to bend weird. So I'll rotate this back so it's a little bit flatter. Uh, you want these lines, like I'm saying, to be a little bit horizontal because uh, that's the way your foot is going to need to crease and bend uh, if you animate a walk cycle for this foot, perhaps. Let's do this out just one more time, or actually move this one more time here. And uh, just making this fit to the shape of the foot that we see from the top. Now these images, just to give credit where credit is due, uh, are images that are downloadable from the website 3D.SK. Uh, it's a website that contains tons of uh, images uh, for fee, but uh, a really great site to use, and these are using that. Uh, I have inserted in my uh, last edge loop here uh, through that back part of the foot, giving me about four extrusions to this um, front part of the foot. And there we go, we see all four of those divisions. Uh, and it's getting that general shape for the bottom of the foot, toes not included here. Uh, now as you see from the side, it's definitely too flat, so I'm gonna have to come in and move these vertices uh, around to fit the shape in a bit. Uh, but uh, let's do the top of the foot now. Uh, again, by selecting these edges along the top, uh, extruding these out. Now, I prefer when making the foot to really work with this edge extrusion method. Uh, and not necessarily the, um, I guess you call box modeling method. Uh, I like that because it allows me to do this sort of trace along route. But as you're seeing here, as I'm tracing, I have to be careful of where my five point stars are going to go, knowing that maybe this junction is going to go one way, or maybe it's going to go down, uh, or maybe go into a different face altogether. I have to be very aware and, and count my faces as I extrude these out to make sure that they do match. Uh, you'll see this in just a second uh, when I start appending up these faces. I'm going to move these around so that they really sync up with the toes that we see on top. Uh, right now I'm taking these two faces uh, and they're eventually going to be the tops of my uh, second and third toe if we're counting from right to left. Just going to try and round out these faces a little bit by moving the vertices around just so everything doesn't seem as flat. With the append polygon tool now, I'm going to try and close this up. But as you see, when we get to one of these points, we, we have to make a decision which way our faces are going to go. Do we continue stretching them or pull them down? To avoid that decision for a little bit, I'm just going to close up these front ones. Uh, these seem like they're going to fit a little bit more regularly. And then we're going to start to see you know, really what's going on with these back faces. Let's bring this down. And now our decision's made. We have a five-point star that's going to form at the top. Uh, and we're just going to have to input in another edge loop along the sides of the front of the foot, right here. Oops, that was the uh, select edge loop tool, not the insert edge loop tool. Uh, we'll rotate this around a bit. 
And now we're going to have faces that match up on either side. I'm just going to have to do this on both sides. I'm going to use this section to now uh, match up with my fourth and fifth toes. Uh, I guess you would call the, uh, the ring toe and the pinky toe. And again, let's use the pen polygon tool and just seal this off. There's another quad down here. So far we're doing good, all quads on this shape so far. Uh, as you see, we're going to have to make another uh, edge loop along this front side. Let's insert that in right now. And I'm going to move this, uh, I really don't want to cut the uh, big toe in half, so I'm going to move this uh, over to the side, making that inside edge a little bit more steep, which is actually something that you'll find if you examine your, toe, uh, your toes and feet anyway is that the uh, medial side of the foot uh, has a little bit more of a steep wall than the outside, which slopes down a little bit. And by tucking this edge off to the side, which we just did, uh, I'm able to get that. I'm going to move this last vertice down a little bit to match up with what I see on the other side. And uh, let's now append across. And it is sewn. So, Last step here, as I was talking about, these bottom uh, faces don't seem like they were working correctly. So let's manipulate this. We're going to wireframe so we can see behind it uh, and just build out that arch for the foot. Now, the arch is only going to be present on one side. So we're going to have to build that uh, classic footprint pattern here on the bottom by moving these off to the edge. And there we go. That'll give us sort of an uh, arch to the inside of the foot, which is where you should see it. And that would be part three, building the front of the foot. Just going to soften my edges, delete my history, and we're done.